Hey everyone, I'm here in front of U of T University College with a professional in all things magic. He has published original tricks and articles in many of the top magic magazines and for the past seven years he's been traveling across North America giving lectures with and to some of the finest magicians in the world, top authors in magic and top consultants. We're lucky to have magician Ben Train here with us today, also U of T student. What's up, man? A pleasure. Thanks for doing you this. You make me sound so good. I know. That's what I do to people. That's the glory of this show. All right, so let's let's begin at the beginning. So how did you get into magic? So I've always loved magic. I think most young kids love magic. Some outgrow it, some right. like me don't. Um, but I know that the, what got me really interested in magic and um, sort of set me down the path was when I was 16 years old, I bought a trick deck. And I went home and I learned the trick with this trick deck and it was a really cool trick. And then a couple days later I went back to this magic store I purchased it at and some guy said, I'll show you a trick. And he showed me the same trick I bought. And I said to him, oh, that's really cool. You did it well, but I, I know how you did it, right? It's a trick deck. I you know like it. critiquing it. Yeah, and I thought it was good, but and he said, uh, oh, I, I don't use a trick deck. And he gave it to me and I looked and sure enough, he had done it with sleight of hand. Right. And that blew my mind because I, I had this entire deck to do it. And when I realized all the potential with sleight of hand, all the potential of things you could really do, I started uh, working on it. That was more than a decade ago now. Wow. Yeah, so a long time. So you've been at it since. See, so my question is, like, how do you suggest people get into magic? Because it seems like a really interesting and fun craft to learn. So how do you su suggest people go about getting into it? Um, in this day and age, there's a ton of information on any subject. And the hard part is narrowing down the good sources and separating them from the bad. So the first thing I would recommend is check your you know, local yellow pages and see if there's a magic store near you. In Toronto, there happen to be two. Uh, Browsers, Dan and Morrissey's Magic. Um, I know all over in almost any uh, metropolitan city, there's gonna be a magic store. Right. If there isn't one, and go inside and ask them for recommendations. If there isn't one, there are a lot of resources online. Go online, best book for a beginner to buy or best video series. Um, I say avoid YouTube right away because you don't know if someone actually knows what they're talking about. They're sharing tricks. Maybe it's not ethical to share, or maybe they're just wrong. Um, so I would say go, go to a magic store first, and if that's not available, Go find a good resource. There's a lot of good resources online. It's easy to it's easy to find. Find a big major website, right. uh, Theory Eleven, Vanishing Ink, uh, Murphy's Magic. I mean, you'll see them. You'll see the Google account. And you'll right. know which ones are bigger. Okay, so now let's get into kind of talking about magic because when I see magic perform live, I never take into account that these people actually formulate these tricks and come up with them. So how do you do that? Like, how tell take me into the process of coming up with a trick, how you come up with a trick, sort of like how a songwriter writes a song, right? It's like this really tough kind of process. A lot of trial and error, I assume, right? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Um, I have a, a couple of aunts and friends and, and uncles and people who are university professors on art or drama or um, philosophy, English, there's all these things, and it always surprises people to find out there's a theory behind magic. It's not just like, I'm going to learn a quick trick and show somebody. There, there are books on theory. There's a lot of research. Um, so the first step is finding the good resource, learning all the foundational things. So right. learn, um, you know, basic slides, learn the history, learn um, what came before you. And then the second thing is you start developing your own material. Once, and once you've developed your own touch, you practice, you've developed some proficiency. So for me, what happens is I'm inspired by something. And then I decide, okay. because magic is my way to express that. So I can you know, be inspired by like a piece of art. It can be like a movie, or it can be uh, a painting, or it can be a relationship I had with a girl that went bad, and I, I, wanna, I wanna talk about it. Or it can be like, you know, I was playing a game of poker and something amazing happened. Or it can be something really mundane. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes I'll, you know, uh, try to think of a good example, but, you know, like a, you want to you pour uh, ice into a cup. You know, the, the fountain drinks or something. You pour ice goes into the cup, right. but there's too much ice in the cup. And you have to dump some out, and so something as mundane as that will happen to me, and I'll think, I wonder how I can turn this into a trick. You know. Okay. And so, so you're I really you're looking at life and you're trying to pick things out. Absolutely, everything I see everything. for me is. Um, it's going to be some, I try to think about how can I apply this to magic and it's really everything uh, I mean there are tricks that have to do with tying your shoelaces They're not mine, but but tricks that have to do with tying your shoelaces or picking up what clothing to wear or tricks that have to do with like Writing things in notebooks or going on the bus. I mean everything in life can be expressed right. like in, in, in art or music or 
play, um, it can be expressed through magic. So that's that's the process for me. For other people, it could be they learn a cool sleight and they're like, what can I do with this? Right. For other people, they might see someone else's trick and want to adapt it to their own style. There's lots right. of ways. Okay, it's now, complex. I, as I mentioned in your setup, you've worked with lots of great magicians. Who do you think right now is the best magician working today? The best in the world? It's a tough question. Maybe you've seen. No, a lot there's of only them. one that comes to mind. I mean, oh, he's just really? so above ever. Chris Mayhew is just. No, <laughs> no, he's not. Yeah, he's my Get friend. Get a shot at this guy. Why not? This What's up? Double glasses. Double glasses guy. This is Chris Mayhew, who has a published book, a DVD, a lot of cool stuff. Um, best magician in the world. Couldn't answer that one because I know I know so many really talented guys that someone would be mad. But um, there are a lot of good guys. Some you've heard of. Uh, David right. Blaine is fabulous. Uh, let's edit the word fabulous out. Uh, he's fantastic. We're having a budget to edit this uh, show. I don't... So, uh, I, I, no, he, David's amazing. He's an yeah. amazing guy. Um, and it's amazing to be in New York with him because, like, you roll up to a club and he is a super celebrity and he embodies some right. mystery. Uh, David Copperfield is the man. I mean, there's a reason he's, like, the best-selling magician of all time. Um, and then there's guys you won't have heard of. Ossie Wynn, Joshua Jay. Darwin Ortiz, there's tons of names I can throw out. Right. Um, the truth is, magic is sort of weird because it takes a talented performer, but also it takes the audience. Like someone has to be receptive to it. Right. If I show someone, I can show two people the same trick and I can do it equally well. And one person can come in and be like, I don't like magic tricks, it's just for kids. I don't, you're not gonna fool me. And even if they get fooled and even if I tell all the jokes and we have all the fun, right. Someone who comes into it and they're receptive to it and into it, or maybe they're in the right mood for it that day, it creates a totally different experience. So the best magician is going to change. For It's going to be different audiences, different right. moments, different people. That being said, there are guys who are consistently better than other people, but uh, um, yeah, I'll leave that up to you guys to sort of find them and, and explore. And I suggest, honestly, go on YouTube and type in like world's best magicians. And you know, there have been documentaries, I know in the UK there was one. Um, that was like the 50 greatest magic tricks of all time. And you can look up guys like Penn and Teller, David Copperfield, Darren Brown. I mean, these are all names. You Google them, you YouTube them, tons of videos come up and they'll blow your mind. Very cool. Okay, enough talk. Ben has agreed to do a trick for us. Whoa, I never said that. I don't know. Well, okay, I will. Okay, I will we'll pay then. you extra for the trick. Okay, so if you need me for any assistance, I'm here. I need you for, for almost everything. For almost, almost, almost everything. everything. Okay, here we go. All right. Say stop. We'll do a <laughs> Stop. Remember that card? I will remember that Is it a different card? card? Don't say it say out it. loud. No. Don't say it out loud. I broke the first rule. Look, shuffle the cards. Okay. Shuffle them. Shuffle. So you didn't take one, you didn't touch one, you just shuffle them, them any way? Any way you any want. Way. Just don't drop them all over the floor. Right. Otherwise, this could take a long time. Shuffling up the way the Indies do. Alright. Perfect. Shuffled, I'm going to take them from you. Okay. One card. Three of spades. I didn't say that was your card. I just said it's the three of spades. Oh, but you calm down. Nervous, sir. I was Good like, lord. We'll fight later. No, no, three of spades is that, that would be cool, right. but it wasn't ours. Okay. And probably not the seven of spades. No. Which means your card is one of the ones in here. Yes. This is a very long trick. Yes. Uh, one of the ones, but not the three or the seven. No. Okay. Hold the cards. All right. Think of your card. Just think of it in your mind. Don't say it out loud. Okay. Not the queen. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> but in your mind, say it only in your mind over and over. Don't say it out loud, but in your mind, keep saying it over and over. Keep saying it to yourself. Keep saying yeah. five of spades, not five of lot. spades, not five of spades. Was it the five of spades? Yeah. That's really weird. And wait, wait. And I, I, you shuffled the cards and it wasn't yeah. on top of your body and I haven't touched you. If no. you don't move, this won't hurt much. Turn over the top card. Yeah. Let the camera see. Oh no! Oh my god! Look at that! Five of spades right here. That's awesome. Ben Train, everybody. The most awkward most reverse awkward handshake, handshake of all.